Chef Buck here and today we're going to boom cook up some corned beef in a can. If you've never used corned beef in a can, congratulations. Now, actually it's a very nice ingredient. I've been eating a lot of this lately because I'm at my mother-in-law's house and she always has cans of this stuff around. We've been using it for a lot of recipes. I love it in the morning for a corned beef hash. And I eat it out all the time, but I haven't made it often at home. But lately I have, and it is so good. If you make it with fresh potatoes, fresh onion that you saute up, and add this corned beef. You get corned beef hash in a can at the grocery store? Just don't do that. Just don't. There's just a lot of recipes that you can use canned corned beef. Corned beef and cabbage. Been eating a lot of that. Super duper delicioso. And so easy to cook. Corned beef in a can is like the spam of beef. Spam is pork-ish, but beef is beef. If you look at the ingredients on here, it is cooked beef, salt, sugar, sodium, nitrite. Just four ingredients. But if you love corned beef, like real corned beef, you're not gonna find that in this can. That's what I'm saying. But this is a fairly useful canned meat product that you can just open up your cabinet and have it there at your whim and whimsy whenever you like. You could find it in different shapes and sizes than this here, but this is a very popular way you'll find it, which is a weird shaped can with this kind of retro 1950s key on the side. Don't be intimidated by this. What you want to do is you want to unlock it and pull your key off. I guess they do this here so it feels like a prize, like you won something or it's like magic. And then you just want to you take the key, it comes on the can like this here, but turn it upside down, boom, then fold your piece of tin over like that and then just turn it clockwise and go around the can. And it's fairly easy to open. And more often than not, you won't have a problem, but sometimes you will. I mean, sometimes you'll be going around the can and this will bust. In fact, they've got instructions on the can for what to do if the key does break. So it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens often enough that they put it on the can. It opens very easily with a regular can opener. So why they got this doohickey on here, I don't know. Maybe because the way they pack it in here you know, it's hard to get out if you don't have this little lid that you open up with some of it open. Now, I don't always do this, but one thing that they do recommend is that you poke a little hole in the top of the can. Did I make that look more difficult than it needed to be? <laughs> For science reasons, it will release the pressure. But uh, sometimes I forget to do that, and it's never really been that hard to get out. Let me get a little plate so I don't have much of a mess over here. So I don't have to put it on my cutting board. And I see it kind of plopped right out. And that's what you have. You have a lump o block o beef. And it's fully cooked. I mean, you can eat it just like this here. Now, a very easy way to use this is to just slice it and fry it in a skillet. And it makes a great side for breakfast or for a sandwich. In fact, I've got some from the other day. Uh, we cooked up a batch for breakfast. But this here, I've sliced and fried in a skillet. And you can see I've been gnawing on this piece here periodically. But it's just some slices of seared beef that I got hanging around the fridge that I can use for whatever I want. We paid about $4.50 uh, for this here and usually you know we find it for less than five bucks but everything I found online was like nine and ten dollars which is just crazy so about around five bucks is the most you want to pay for this or at least the kind of places I shop but we're not going to do anything overly fancy with our can o meat today we're going to make a very simple beef pickle dip that doesn't sound all that inspiring but I mean everybody's sitting at home now you know we're all eating bread and crackers and cookies and this will just be something that you can take your crackers and, and dip in. Maybe something you never had before. This recipe calls for a very few ingredients. I got some sour cream right here. And I didn't have quite enough sour cream, uh, so I added a little bit of uh, Greek yogurt in here. You know, sour cream and yogurt are pretty much interchangeable 
in a lot of recipes. And I have made this before with cream cheese. And it's super delicious, but cream cheese is very dense. And this meat, blocko meat, is very dense. So when you take that density and mix it with this density and whip it up in a bowl, it, it's not as dippable as I would like. But you could half the amount of sour cream and, uh, and add cream cheese if you want to. So we got our sour cream, and I'm gonna throw one cup of pickle type stuff in here. Take any kind of pickle you want, you know, and chop it up, but you wanna chop it up finely. You know, you can just use a relish if you like. In fact, I used some of this here, and I finished up this bottle of sweet relish. But use whatever kind of pickle, pickle type pickle that you wanna use. Bloop. Now, if you want a little bit of heat in there, you can add some jalapeno. Now, I just got some slices here that I minced up. But well, that's optional. That's only if you want heat. Now, if you don't have jalapenos, another uh, nice item to have in the kitchen is some horseradish. This is some creamy horseradish. I'm at the bottom of the uh, jar, so I'll just go ahead and throw the rest of this in here. But along with the jalapenos, this is just optional. You know, if you don't want it to be tangy, spicy at all, don't, don't throw that stuff in there. I got a little bit of dried minced onion. Then a little bit of black pepper as much as you like. Now you don't have to add salt. You know, like if you look at the ingredients on this meat, you know, like the number two ingredient, I think, is salt. There's lots of salt in this stuff, in your pickles, you know, there's plenty of salt. So we're gonna take our black o meat and then we're just going to massage it. And you're gonna love the feel of that. You're gonna love the feel of that beef between your fingers. It's gonna remind you of when you were a little kid but I hope not. So now we just want to stir it all together and get it well incorporated. And that's all there is to this dish. This is just a very easy way to use canned corned beef. And there are a lot of dips similar to this. You can make one uh, with sardines, kind of a fish dip. Or if you get a canned ham, you can make a ham dip. So this is just a variation on a very simple dip idea. But the pickles really make this. So that's it. A super easy peasy way to use canned corned beef. Alrighty, I'll have a link down below if you want to go check out some more uh, canned corned beef recipe ideas over at MyFoodChannel.com. Go in there and check it out in the undercarriage world. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you in the future. Bye-bye.